audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Tonight, our guest is Hal Sparks from Queers Folk. And uh, Hal, you also. Thank you, yes. With none of those qualifications, for the record, you know. Just in case anybody was going yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hal Sparks' opinion is not endorsed no. by the show. Hal's uh, got a brain, got a sense of humor, so uh, he's allowed to be here and chime in on anything Thank he wants. You. Thank you very right, much. Tell, I, tell, I tell Anderson to uh, cut his mic off. <laughs> Queers Folk is uh, the show you uh, know him from now. You knew him from uh, Talk Soup, mm-hmm. 99, uh, 2000. You did, you, uh, well, there's a couple things uh, I want to get into. First, actually, I'm looking at uh, the uh, my cheat sheet here, and it says in uh, 1987 you were... Uh, Called the funniest, funniest teenager, teenager in Chicago. In Chicago. Yes, yes, yes. How does that happen? Um, it was a stand-up competition, and I was doing stand-up. I've been doing stand-up since I was fifteen. Wow! So, how old were you when you were the funniest teacher? I uh, mean, uh, funniest uh, teenager. Seventeen. 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 Yes, I won second place the first year, and I came back and claimed the title. Wow! Um, yeah. Little known fact, I also wrote the material of the second place, third place, and fifth place runner-ups in that. Wow, really? yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, because I worked at, at my high school. We had a big kind of group clique of comics. Where did they have the competition? I'm just curious. At, uh, at Ditka's. Mom's Mike, garage. No, Ditka's. Mike Ditka's restaurant, yeah. It was just, you know, kind of the venue. Wow. Yeah. And you ever go, you, you remember some of those jokes? Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I mean. But just uh, like. Uh, am I going to repeat them? No. No. <laughs> No, I wouldn't ask that. They're but filthy. I mean, is no, it is it just sort of about being seventeen and being in high school? No, I moved. Uh, I grew up. Did in... you resort to the masturbation humor like Adam continues to resort to? No, to I, I don't think. I don't. I don't say that's resorting to anything. Thank I, you. That's pulling the Thank rip you. cord of comedy. If you're Thank in a dark you. spot, you need to get out. That's how you do it. That's right. Everyone can relate. Adam Hold spends a lot of time in that dark spot. I <laughs> pulling my rip. No, cord. but I, I grew up in Kentucky, and then I moved to Chicago when I was fourteen. With a heavy southern accent and a dark brown peach fuzz mustache, which was depressing, and it was just like the routine was like seven minutes of my hell. And and you had a in high school, you had a, like a little uh, group that met that worked on a stand up yeah, yeah. And material and stuff. Yeah, we did competition and acting and drama in, in my high That's school. That's the group you wrote for. Yeah, yeah. So I I would work with these guys and and we just pitch jokes around, see what worked because we couldn't go to clubs. We weren't old enough. Right. And then after I won the contest, I got to go to Zany's, and then I did a political club in Chicago called the Cloud Club, um, which I wasn't old enough to go to. So the owner, who was one of the judges, would walk me through the bar part into the back, and I would do my act that night, like three times that night. And you know, and I wasn't old enough to vote, and I was doing jokes about Reagan. And <laughs> it also uh, says yeah. here, ironically, uh, that you've never had a drink of alcohol. No, nope, not one. Wow. No, never. Never you, smoked you anything, never done any drugs. Zip. All right, get out of here, kid. Be, <laughs> the, no, so no Get I'm, the bricks. No. We don't need your kind in here. <laughs> right. And what, uh, r- r- throwing yeah. that in my face. You see the way he threw that in my face, Drew? What, yeah, oh yeah. Never, I never smoked r- also, yeah. you mean? Yeah, but smoking, the booze in. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, uh, were your parents alcoholics or something? Mm-mm. What happened? No, I... What uh, went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm part native. Um, ooh, ooh. There and, you go. And Say no more. Yeah, there's no real... You know, if we got a, if there's a gene going on there, I there probably have it. There is a gene. There so, is a gene. So I'm just... I just Especially, chose to avoid it. Uh, Cherokee, Cheyenne. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cherokee and oh, Crow. Oh, boy. So, um... Yeah, that was just a choice. Really young, at like thirteen, I'm like, I'm not doing this ever. And you know, and then it became like, oh, Adam's gonna show you. Yeah, no, go ahead. He speaks. But only when he's drunk. <laughs> he's drunk every night. Well, I could turn so. Japanese at the end. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it's a kamikaze so, pilot so at the you, end. You know, you don't they were know. on meth, by the way. Just to, okay. So you don't know problem. what it's like to be <laughs> drunk, huh? Uh. I mean, well, yeah, I've been kicked in the head. I mean, it, right. uh, I you know what it's it. like to be out of it a little bit, but not drunk. Sure, no, Adam's no, I've never been drunk. tonight is to get you drunk. I yeah. Can, I can see it formulating. Well, dude, it's we're going been out. tried by prettier people than you. Oh. Um, and it's, oh, that's, it won't, a, that's his deal. Yeah, well, it won't happen. Said. What is my deal? I got a couple of 40-ounce uh, Mickeys. I've been here 12 minutes. Dr. Car. Drew's already dissecting me, ladies and gentlemen. going out to the parking lot. During the break. Seriously, I mean, I grew. you know, you grow up in Kentucky and you just watch people lives away 
and it doesn't interest you. Right. You know, right. really, if you're going to get out, if you're going to stay there, you know, that's the only thing that will keep you alive. Quite frankly, you know, when you're working at a filling yeah. station, you're like, I need to smoke rock. Uh, to get through this day, well, um, I drew. I see. I, I grew up out here, so I'm, I'm not going right. anywhere. I mean, I can booze. Is what <laughs> yeah, but you need to smoke rock. Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. To get uh, yeah. All right. So let, <laughs> let's wasteland. Let's move. Right. Uh, let's move forward here. So now you're you're doing talk soup, and uh, that's a pretty big break for you. Yes, in, huge. Uh, 99. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, long audition process. Five or, years. Oh the, my god. Five yeah. year audition in, process. Yeah, they brought me in every year that John was on the air. <laughs> I think what unbeknownst is, to John. What happened to him? What's he doing now? Um, Smoking I'm, rock. Yeah, I'm right. Station Stop. in Got Kentucky. It. I, Kentucky. You know, uh, I, I can't comment. All I can say is, you know, it, it's funny to go on that show because I was on it for two days and everybody's like, it's a big springboard. And I'm like, you know what? Kinnear left. It took him three years to get a job afterwards. He did Sabrina three years after he left Toxic. And then really? I'm in there two days and they're like, go, John, go. And I'm like, you know what? Let him live or die on his own talent. And then, you know, I'm there for a year, and I end up doing something good. So it's like everybody thinks it skips a generation now for Aisha. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. yeah. Wonder, now, you know, like every third person, you know, and the odd number talk show, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's, you know, it's like you do, you know, you live your life based on whatever break you're given. You can either screw it up or run with it. And, well, who's who's doing, is Talk Soup on now? No, they canceled it. Oh, that's uh, Nine months after I left, you're welcome. That was yeah. Aisha Tyler was there, remember her? Yeah, yeah, I remember I like she was the, the, yeah. the last yeah. one, but I was wondering if there's going to be anyone after her, nope. but they just pulled the plug. Yep. Well, it, it had a run. Yeah. But uh, anyway, seven years, seven, you years. you left after a year, but yeah. then did Queer's Folk come up right up against it? Sort of. I was I was shooting Dude Where's My Car, actually, and the, the script for Queer's Folk was going around and nobody would read it. Like, everybody was avoiding it, and a lot, a lot of stars wouldn't read for it. A lot of gay actors wouldn't read for it. A lot of straight actors wouldn't read for it. Their agents wouldn't let them have a copy. It was really heavy duty. And so when I found out about it, my I asked my manager, like, she gave it to me, and she said, it's really good. Read it. Let me know what you think. And it was fantastic. And I was like, how can you pass this up? If, I was, if I'm an actor, if I don't take it because I'm afraid of being typecast as gay or worried about that, you know, the idea that that's a stigma, I'm a jerk. So I read for it, and... I got it. I was, uh, I think, three and a half weeks after I left Talk Soup. So, uh, you know. so you, so you left Talk Soup because Reed was fired. Stuff was happening. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was fired. You were fired. Oh yeah. Well, why were you fired? Um, <laughs> uh, that was a that's a complicated thing. I think you know my ratings were really excellent. The show was going really well. I think they were a little bit worried that it was you know kind of getting a little out of their control, and they wanted me to do what the writers wanted to do more often. Oh, Adam. Because those guys had been there. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah. I had a little run-in with the Talk yeah. Soup writers myself. Yeah, you know, they wanted me to do their material, and I was like, this is a lot of it. A lot of what was coming across my desk was either racist, sexist, homophobic, misogynist. Well, that was the reason that's you were. That's good that's material. Why, that's yeah, why. that was my problem. Like, Not leave enough this, of this stuff. Leave, the, leave that for oh. Adam when he guest hosts. Uh, but I, you know, I... My thing is, it's my face. I'll do my style of humor, you know. And they were right, they were giving me jokes they wrote for John, you know. And I was like, I can't do it. And so they'd been there longer, so they had more power. So they kind of weaseled me out. Um, wow! See the sons of bitch writers. See, over Adam there just, I just so. wouldn't read a word of it. Yeah, well, that's what I did too. And they hated me. It was like the last three months on the show were, were hell. I mean, they were, and then they just cut me off without letting me do a final goodbye show. They were just like, "Oh yeah, You're screwed goodbye." Wow. Yeah, because they, they thought I would disappear. I'd only been there a year, so who the hell is he and, you know, and whatever. And then two weeks later, I got Dude Where's My Car. I'm the winner of the week in Entertainment Weekly. And apparently there was this big thing where they <clears throat> wouldn't let me on E for a year. They wouldn't show anything. Oh, they wouldn't show any clips or no, anything. No, nothing. Nice. Yeah, I didn't well, exist. I was persona non grata. Now who's laughing? Uh, both of us. I'm back in the goods with them. They changed all the executives, so it's a better organization a little bit. But that, yeah, that show went away. Well, Queer's Folk is uh, Sunday nights, 10 o'clock, yeah. on uh, Showtime in its uh, third season. And Tuesday nights in, in high def, so if you're like, Oh, really? Yeah. Is he, uh, Jesus. Yeah. Well, it's, that's that cable, def. you know, they run it every 13 hours, you know. Right. All right. Are you gay, by the way? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> True. What'd you think? You think Hal was gay? No, he was talking about... Uh, I just want to know what kind of... He was of... talking about... I, I, I figure this, this not drinking yeah. thing was a way to get women drunk. Because he said that. He goes, no, Pretty, no, no. prettier people than you have tried to get me drunk. See, yeah, but there's no, no. prettier men than me. Oh, uh, I guess that's true. Quite a few. See, right. Yeah. They're all on, you know. They're in this room. Just, <laughs> on my show. No, but, no, I wasn't, no, I, I've never uh, been with a girl who's drunk. 
Oh, really? I wouldn't be. Whoa. <laughs> What there you the go. hell is going on? He's the anti Adam. It's awesome. <laughs> he was, yes. he, this might be a combustion here or something. <laughs> there could be some sort of uh, antimatter, a black hole created right, right yeah, now. Right. I'm going to find out he's my father. And, <laughs> no. Never been with a girl who wasn't, was drunk. Yeah. That was you, never it's been so, one who wasn't drunk. Yeah, right. That's you. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, that's you. See? Why else would they be with me? There you go. All right. <laughs> I'm, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Stephanie? It's an interesting yeah. angle, though. I like that angle. I'm going to try that it's one. It's not an angle. It's a good angle. It's not an angle. Keep that it one. isn't an angle. Stephanie? Hi, Steph. Yep. You're, uh, what are you? Drew, turn that screen She's down. She's a woman. I can't see. No, She's uh, 18. I'm an 18 bisexual female. All right. Yeah. Do you, do okay. you need to say female if you're bisexual anymore? I mean, is it, at yeah. that point, is I it hope, not? I hope so. <laughs> okay. It probably doesn't matter, yeah. <laughs> so what's up? Okay, I've been bisexual since I was 10. Well, I've known it since I was 10. Yeah, but who, usually I'm with girls that are my close friends, you know? How did, how did you know you were bisexual at 10? Well, I didn't really know what bisexual was, but, like, we'd play truth or dare when I spend the night over at their house. and You're a heroin addict. True, please. And what would happen? <laughs> like, you know, you'd do the stupid dares, and then you'd get to, well, I dare you to kiss a teddy bear, and then, oh, I dare you to kiss me. Or you'd play house, and what was the mom, and what was the dad, you know? How old were you when that was happening? I don't know, 10, 11, maybe. Did something weird happen to you when you were like six, seven? Nope. Stuff uh, happened after that. What happened? No, I was raped when I was 13, but nothing before that. Raped were you, at 13. Were you physically abused before that? No. Yes. Well, yes. sort of. Yes, physically uh, abused before uh, that. Sort of? What sort of? I grew up with physically? an abusive father. There you go. All right. Bingo. So uh, your antenna got a little bit bent. Mm -hmm. But now, what's the problem? Nothing's the problem. I just, now I'm a dancer for like the last four months, so I tend to meet a lot of bisexual girls mm -hmm. that I don't know. You, you, you're a stripper? No, I'm a dancer. Okay. I wear lingerie and I give lap dances. All right. Yeah, let's call that a stripper. <laughs> what kind of place uh, do you wear lingerie and just do lap dances at? A bar. At a bar, but uh, are there people up on stage dancing? No, you just sit in a chair and you give them a lap dance. So she never actually strips. She's in those clothes the whole time. Exactly. Yeah, and you have so to wear nylons. You have to wear not. Oh, that's attractive. Um, right, and hmm. and but guys are still uh, you're still rubbing on uh, erect penises, right? Right. Through jeans, which is irritating, I would imagine. No, I always wear sweats when I. You, you probably that's haven't been why, one of those that's places. Why the nylon comes. <laughs> I get drunk. I get the ladies drunk, and I wear I wear my sweatpants with no underpants. <laughs> no. no underpants. No, no. Man. Love, Adidas running pants. pants. What's the matter with you? It, yeah. What's that, Stephanie? I love the swishy pants. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so. Jeez, I want to know what kind of place this is, by the way. I've never been to a, a strip club that didn't have strippers, just What dancers. part of the country are you in? Uh, Illinois. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Rural. So, small town bar. Yeah. Okay. Rural area. So what's, yeah. what's the problem? Small what's the brown question? Panel. question is, because of these girls, I don't know. How am I supposed to know if they're hoochie mamas? You know, I don't care. I don't want a relationship with them. I just want to have sex with them. So I just, like, is there protection out there for girls? You know? Well, there's latex barriers. You can create a dental dam, right? They have right. dental dams. Where do you get those at, though? And how would you bring you know that what? up to the girl without being a bitch, basically? You don't bring Sorry. it. Uh, well, Sorry. I mean, you don't want her touching you without you having a dental dam down there, right? Well, she doesn't well, want I, to touch a I, girl. Right. I don't want to get no diseases. That's I know. I understand. So <laughs> take take a regular <laughs> condom, like a regular gone. dry condom, yeah. and cut cut the top off it so you have a tube. And right. then cut along the tube so you can roll the tube apart. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you get a sheet out of it. Also, though, if you take a uh, 5 8 PVC pipe, I've found, and uh, go ahead and heat that up using a butane right. torch. Wrap yourself flat, in, in uh, flat uh, that saran out. wrap. Put that across that the as well. Kind of like leftovers. Dip your tongue in paraffin. That's a nice way to... Mm -hmm. I don't, Stephanie, why don't, you, why don't you focus on having a relationship? Yeah. I have a relationship. I've been with the same guy for four years. Okay. Well, why don't you focus on uh, focus on not acting out so much? I know you've been through a lot. Yes, that's all you do. Listen, listen to me, screwball. Somebody got to you early. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for what they did to you, but they screwed you up, and now you've got a life of acting out ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And that's that's going to be your life, and it's it's kind of cool you're, when you're 18, but it gets ugly as the years yeah, wear you're spending, on. You're spending time. You're going to these women, you know, or you're wanting to experience women, probably to get avoid the fear of intimacy with a man because of what your dad did. So it's not really a hypersexual feeling. It's just fun. And it means nothing. All right. Right. 
All right, yeah. but good times. Uh, don't have any kids. Yeah, with know. these women, because they're broken, too. No, what do you mean? What about <laughs> kids? She has a boyfriend. Yeah. I have a fiancé. You have a fiancé. Better oh. better yet. Four years. A four years. Even been, better. How old what? is he? How old is he when I met him? How old is he now? 23. And what does he do for a living? <laughs> Works at a warehouse. Works, works in a, a warehouse. warehouse. Mm-hmm. All right. He yeah. works at a warehouse. You work at a whorehouse. It's all good, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Yeah. He sounds like a uh, delightful guy who was, uh, what, 19 when you were 14? 19 when I was 16. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've been with him for four years? He lost his virginity to me. He's 23 now? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm doing some math here. That's I don't right. see how he was, uh, how you I'll were... I'll be 19 in May, and he'll be 23 in June, or 24 in June. Stephanie, all that bravado and stuff, not going to serve you well. All right, I just well. listen, I, I, look, I, this is this is all the show comes down to for me, which is... Don't get pregnant. These poor people... Don't get pregnant. Well, no, here's... Don't breed? Here's, if, yeah. yeah, here's the steps. Here's here's the thought process. The first pr- th- process is, I, ah, I want to kill your dad. I can't believe what he did to you. Right. That is so horrible. The your next, reaction. The you're... next thought is... I want to kill you. Because right. you're annoying me. You're and, annoying me. And you're, you're serving you're angry, no one. Your you're life doesn't. Up. Yeah. The third one is, let's give her some help. Let's see what we can do. The fourth one is... Don't get pregnant. Don't get pregnant. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We can't actually help you. Yeah. So uh, just don't make any more problem you. Well, don't keep the cycle going. You're, you're 18, and God willing, eight years from now, you may see some light and do some therapy and read a few books, and you there may there may be time for you yet. But you're eight. Not now. Not well, now, part, so part don't reason, get pregnant. Part of the reason not now, you guys, is that this is working for her now. Yeah, it this, serves this, her. This is works now. Now it feels good. It is exciting. And, and you can't you can't talk people out of that because it does work for them. It's working in a... It, it's a And there's no alternative. Well, there are alternatives, but they can't see them. No. And it's too painful to go down those paths. So the pathology just rolls and rolls what until I mean it's a crisis yeah. and then doesn't work anymore. What it's I mean like is she lives anymore. in a little rural town in Illinois and, oh, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. There's just no options around you. Yeah. So you're just out of boredom. You create kind of self-generated mild psychoses that will just give keep your life full of drama so you never uh, accomplish uh, anything. Sidebar, Adam. Sidebar. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. This kid's telling us a lot about himself. Getting pretty cathartic yeah, here. Yeah, indeed it is. Yeah. I'm a little frightened here. Oh, come on. Yeah. So, all right. All right you're making him nervous. Okay. I'm not wrong. <laughs> I'm no. not wrong. No, you're not wrong. No yeah. one is Left for a wrong. reason, no. man. No, 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 no. no, no. Nobody's saying. Shh, shh, shh. It's fine. <laughs> Keep your hands where, where you can see them. Diana? Hi. You're 21? Yeah. What's up? I just wanted to say that, well, two things. One, I called you guys like four years ago. Yeah. And you gave me like awesome advice that I totally didn't listen to, and oh. I really should have. Oh, good. Well, what would we tell you? <laughs> Um, well, you told me I should have broken up with my boyfriend and oh. not be friends with him. Yeah. Yeah. We so give that, advice like that a lot that people don't follow. I know, and they really should. And what happened? You stayed with him for a while no. longer? No, we broke up when we got to college, but things just got really bad. They tried to be friends. They kept sleeping together. Yeah, kind of. Right. Wow. Yeah, there it right. goes. All right. So but, now, um, now you're going to listen to us. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just started using the Nuva Ring. And do you, you know what that is, right? The cervical, it's, in, it's inserted with yeah. estrogen? Yeah. Yeah, so it says that you're supposed to put it in when you first get your period. So can you use a tampon with that? You know, I have no experience with this. I would imagine, right? They don't, they, they, it, it doesn't seem like it'd be a very popular product if you couldn't continue your usual hygiene. Or, and they certainly would have gone out of their way to tell you. Right. So, and so what is it called? A Nuvo Ring? Nuvo Ring. Yeah. Nuvo Ring. N U V A. Mm-hmm. Is that right. like new ring? And uh, they no, it's just a reuse for uh, braces, rubber bands that they're just remarketing, <laughs> the repackaging those. <laughs> so you they, can seal oh, up your service with it. No, it's, they just uh, they dip them in some uh, hormone and then just shoot them up there with a blowgun. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. and Does what? It hurt? Yeah, how do you get it up in there? You just you bend it and put it in. And it just sort of snaps into place. Kinda. It just kind of sits in there like a tampon does. And why do you got to oh. put it up there uh, during your period? That seemed like a bad time to uh, apply the Nuva ring. That's what I thought too. I don't know. It's probably the beginning, like the cycle. Like, I guess. You know, the medicating you during that part of the cycle. I don't have an answer for that. All right. So you put it. I mean, I think it's probably to give you a jumping off point. Like, <laughs> hey, this is when we put it in. So six months from now, when your period starts, that's when it needs to be taken mm-hmm. out or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and they could have said when it ends, though. Too. How long are you supposed to keep it first, in? You know, with, with uh, most of it, it's the first Monday days. after your period starts. That kind of stuff. This is right. right when it starts. Say What's again? that? How long? You leave it in for 21 days. Right. So it's the... It's right. the birth control. Yeah, it's right. Like, it's like the patch. The All right. time. Hey, oh, good times. I say go for it, and if, you know... Can you feel it up Watch there? Watch for it. When you're yeah. walking around and stuff? 
How, no? about, how about during intercourse? Uh, I don't. I just put it in today for the first time. Okay. All right. That's so great. I haven't tried it yet. Nope. Good, good time. Yeah, seems like you get the tampon in there. But the yeah. tampon comes shooting out like a torpedo and sticks into <laughs> someone's thigh. Ask, ask your doctor. Yeah. You know, ask your, well, it, it, does, it doesn't make much sense that they would create this product without it being able to be used with a tampon. It, Unless it, they're it, assuming that during those days you would use a pad now because... They wouldn't, they, would, this, nah. they wouldn't develop something like that. You know? And they would have gone out of their way to tell her. They would have said, do not. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. That's true. Yeah. All right. Hey guys, break time. Uh, mm-hmm. Break time. Yeah, Hal knows a lot about pads. Yeah. It's true. Doesn't know much about boozing or loving, but he knows about them pads. Did you have a bunch <laughs> of sisters? Uh, no, I have one. One sister. Yeah. All right. Hal Sparks is uh, here from uh, Queer as Folk. We'll uh, take some Thank quick you. break. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be right back. Love line. Love line. We'll be right back. <laughs> Every hour, two Americans under the age of 25 are infected with HIV. Protect yourself. Call toll-free 1-866-344-KNOW. Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Hal Sparks is our guest tonight. Hola. Queers Folk is the name of uh, his show on HBO Sunday Showtime. nights. Showtime. Oh, oh. oh yes. Showtime. Very important. Sorry. They whip that uh, into me. Kind of underline that. And yeah. uh, then uh, Unacceptable. High Def <laughs> on uh, Tuesday nights. Yep. For all you uh, high Sunday nights at 10. Yeah. Out there. And uh, tomorrow night, uh, race car driver uh, Paul Tracy will be in here, and he's wow. doing the uh, he's doing the Long Beach uh, Grand Prix, and uh, I'm doing that celebrity race, so uh, we'll have that to uh, talk about tomorrow night. All right, so let's. Uh, you know, I think that was uh, your that was a stock car. That was a V8. That was American Pushrod uh, V8 there. Yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, get back to the phones and uh, speak to Stephanie, who's 20. Stephanie? Yes? What's up? Um, I have kind of concern about when I have sex. It, it'll sometimes really, really hurt, and like just above like the pubic triangle. And I know this sounds weird, <laughs> but it's the only way I can think to describe it. It feels like his penis is like poking me. It's I'll tell you that that pubic triangle is a very d- dangerous. Dangerous compasses mm-hmm. spinning Spin around. Right. Electrical Ship systems lost. Go aircraft. Oh, oh they're they're on a training flight in the forties. They lost five, five. American yeah, aircraft. Yeah, the Philadelphia there. experiment was based on the pubic triangle. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, we needed to do that. Um, uh, so, is it his shape? <laughs> well, wait, now let's get clear where, where we're talking about. Are you talking about up in your abdomen? You feel like there's, there's... Uh, no, up front. I don't know. It's just like. When he's going in, it just, it, this only happens once in a while. It's not like a... Do you feel like you're tearing? No, it just it's feels like something's poking it, like it's hitting. Like it's hitting her cervix. Yeah, does it happen when, he's, when he starts too fast, like without enough foreplay, that kind of thing? No, it, it's just kind of a random thing. It'll do it. And it's just, Are you talking about where your pubic bone is, it hurts? Um, No, it's just like, um, more like around the pubic hair, that whole area. That area? Yeah. Up in the uh, underside. Uh, of up high? Yeah. Pubic triangle, it's an arch. Inside, though, mm-hmm. way deep inside. Yeah, I- inside. Yeah, that's that's fine. He is poking something in there. There's mm-hmm. your uterus, your yeah. cervix. It's not a bottomless pit. It actually yeah. does have it as an end. Yeah. I know, I know, but it's like sometimes it does, and sometimes. All right. Have you had a pelvic exam recently? Uh, no, not recently. Have they ever told you you had a flip tipped uterus? Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, I suspect that may be what's going on what's here. What's that? It just the uterus kind of flips around, it's sort of floppy, and when you when you straighten it out by putting a penis in there. It flips back into position it can feel kind of uncomfortable you can have other things like ovarian cyst and endometriosis and other things that need to be checked out are all treatable and benign Mm -hmm. but uh, go you know you're sexually active it's time to get your health care maintained right yeah Mm -hmm. maybe it's your position too yeah um i don't know because we'll do a lot of different positions and it'll still just kind of whole lot does it a whole lot of does it happen like in all the positions when you do that or do you move around till you find one that doesn't hurt No, when it happens it'll happen in all Okay. All right. All right. There's a guy a little aggressive. Um, it can be. Uh huh. Gotta just... slow him down a little. Yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> isn't it? It's life. <laughs> Recognize if you're in an airplane bathroom, then yeah. you know not a lot you can do. Yeah, but whenever it happens, I mean, we'll, he'll stop immediately and stuff. All right, but good. yeah, listen. Just this is a sign that you need to get your health maintenance taken care of and see a, have have regular pelvic exams. Okay. Okay. And what do you use for birth control? A uh, condom. All right. Getting on the pill or Good. the shot here before too long. Good times. Yeah, <laughs> get on it sooner than later. 
Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to get it at the Why? end of the summer because I'm going home for. Okay, because I don't, I don't the trust key. the condom thing with the uh, couples that are going at it every day. Keep the, morning, and keep the morning after pill. Them. Keep the morning after pill right. handy in the meantime. Please, uh, Stephanie. All right, hmm. let's talk to uh, Tracy, who's 20. Tracy? Hey. What's up? Um, I had a question for you guys. Um, I have never had an orgasm during sex. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's very common. I mean, during intercourse. Right. That's most women your age, that would fit. Every single one of them, no matter what the age. Well, what? certainly yes. at 20, it's very common. I've done well, it. you know what? When they're sober, that's you'd be the, amazed at what they can do, Adam. It's the Corolla man. Yeah, but that's a catch-22. How do you get to have sex with them? <laughs> Tracy? Uh-huh. Uh, Sit-ups. It, you've, had, uh, you've had an orgasm during uh, oral sex? No. Well, no. So you've never had an orgasm? Mm, no, not she can have, um, anybody besides myself. Right. Uh, she can have it on her own. Right. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And uh, you have a steady boyfriend? Yes. <clears throat> and, and a half years. he's doing all the right things from what I know <laughs> why do, do you ever do what you do to yourself and show him that kind of thing yeah he, he knows that I don't I mean we talk about it and stuff he knows no 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 I'd... do you ever show him what yeah. you do right yeah I have and it, it, it doesn't work Ooh. can he do exactly what you're doing I mean to, with you <laughs> you know, are you using, um, uh, what I'm asking is, are you doing it just manually or are you using a device? No, it's manually. Okay, all right. So can you put his hand where your hand is and why work him, you, walk him through why it? Why don't you put your hand where your hand is and let him have sex with you while your hand is where your hand is? You can help yourself along. That's true. Do you do that? No, I've never tried that. Do that. That would make sense, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, the other thing is literally... Is, is that, does that just not define, again, the difference between men and women? Yeah, it just doesn't what? show. That, 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 I mean, it never occurred to me to have an orgasm. You know, guys, like, they don't take their hand away from that area. Well, yeah, well, you, know, you, you almost amazing. can't help it, though. We, we have, you know, I, orgasm listen. under duress. You're like, you know, you wake up with an accidental one, you know. Even if I, even if you had a, a penis that was a, a half an inch long, you'd still be. Don't make fun of Adam it. right in front I don't of me. Right. <laughs> holding the fingers. Even, I didn't say like Adam. I just <laughs> even if one had one. No. Tra- Tracy, uh-huh. why don't you yeah. uh, rub your bean there while uh, he's having sex with you? Yeah, help him along. Oh, he's gonna have to do that. Then? No, who knows? It, just do it, would you? No, I don't think you will. I, oh, this is oh, hell oh, talking. Don't even I, answer. Are we Kreskin over here? Just rub yourself and let him hump you. Let's move on. <laughs> Please. Am Since, I always going to have to do Well, she's curious. I don't, I don't think so. What do we know? It's funny. Like, she's afraid she's going to open Pandora's box and get into something here that is literally Pandora's box. Right. And she doesn't understand it. And or she's Tracy's. Fr- <laughs> women feel defective when they can't, you know, a lot of times. But you know? most yeah. women do not have orgasm during intercourse ever. Most women. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. No, that's true. That's, a, just... that's statistically true. Uh, okay. mm-hmm. Most ever? I mean, most what about, ever. what about when, you know, this statistic was taken. What about when it, they yeah. hit 40? Well, I, maybe I shouldn't say ever. Mo- most don't, most rarely are able to have it during, during intercourse, if ever. Well, that, that sounds like rarely, the fault. if ever. Um, no, it's just they're able to have it during oral sex. They're able to have it with, like you're mm-hmm. advising Tracy, but just with intercourse, it just, that doesn't happen. All right. I'll tell you about that later off the air. Mm, that's true. <laughs> Kelsey? Yeah. You're 26? Yeah. What's up? Hey, I'm calling because I have a concern about my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, he, I guess, is an alcoholic, but he's been sober for at least 25 years. I think he quit drinking before I was born. He's been sober or abstinent? Um, he's in not, a program. He has a sponsor. He's going to meetings. Well, I don't know. I know that he went to AA in the beginning. All right. I don't know. He, I guess, hasn't really shared that much about it. He's always talked to my sisters and I about that it's in the family and, you know, mm-hmm. just been real open with us about our habits and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But um, I guess recently in the past couple years, like at my sister's wedding, he drank and he's um, <clears throat> had alcohol maybe three or four times. Well, what was he like when he drank? Is your father the president just by... Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. What was he like? Yeah. Um, well, the last time was this summer, and he, I don't know, he was drinking champagne, and I guess he wasn't out of control or anything. He was under control, you know, kind of just jovial, right. and his face got a little red. But right. well, I was just wondering, you know, if that's okay or if that's possible for someone who's, you know, been sober for so long to... To have controlled drinking again? Yeah. Uh, what it, about that? It, it is for a while. 
He will be able to control it for a while, and then it will suddenly explode out of control again. And what that, about, that is in, I, I that don't is, necessarily share that sort of Neither, neither do we. Yeah. Wait a minute. That, that is in the biology. That is okay. well established. It, it, is, it is a mechanism. Basically, uh, the reward apparatus of the, the, mm -hmm. what's something called the ventral tegmental area and the nucleus accumbens alter permanently in the genetically prone individual. And while the drive from that region of the brain may not be as powerful years and years later. Mm -hmm. Once you reactivate that chemistry, it's in absolutely categorically the case, mathematically, that you will once again begin progressing, and the progression will be rather rapid at a certain point. But this it, is, it is, is yeah. a mathematically predictable disease. Listen, no one knows yeah. poos like hell over here has yeah. never had a goddamn yeah. drink in his life. Yeah, just because I don't have them doesn't mean I haven't seen it. And you so, so you may, so he may, he yeah. may control it for quite a while. But as long as he has a relationship with it, it will eventually that biology will kick in. What? Unless, I but mean, let me say, we... quiet down. Let me say this, Drew. <laughs> what if, uh, and th this must happen on occasion, somebody decides to stop drinking, who could may not have been it. out of control yes, or yes. could have controlled it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Maybe. If somebody stopped drinking before they before they cross the threshold where the switch, so to speak, is thrown. They would not necessarily right. go out of control again. No. That's, they, okay, that's what I'm wondering too, because he was, I think, 25 or 26 when he quit. But well, that that, that doesn't do. matter. They've well, actually. No, no, no. I know it had a lot to do with my mom wanting him. A, a lot of this actually, a lot of the research being done right now is on peri-adolescent alcohol exposure, and that if he had exposure when he was young, be prior to adulthood, yeah. even though it may not have been completely out of control in adulthood, uh -huh. the switch is basically thrown that way too. So, so and 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 the fact that he needed AA to stop suggests that he couldn't stop on his own. And one, again, okay. the, with, the thing with addiction is you can either stop or you can't. And if you can, go ahead and stop. If you can't, you're addicted, and that means the switch is thrown. And okay. That, 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 right. What would make him d drink again? I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a wonderful feeling for him. He and wants it's a, to well, it's also a socializing factor because a lot of times you can feel left out. I would imagine, you know, especially if you got used to it. Talk to alcoholics. I mean, I, I'm, I run a huge recovery program, so I talk to them all day long. And this mm -hmm. it, alcohol is something that forever is a wonderful feeling for them. And you take the, they want to believe they're normal again. It's been so many years, and they test it, and they can kind of control it for a while. So. Why should I restrict yeah, myself well, from this thing him, so important? Let him do it until yeah, he spins he'll, out, and then he gets sober yeah, yeah, again. Yeah, you, no. can, you can all have an intervention, and yeah. it'll bring you all closer together as a family. There yeah, Ke I think Kelsey needs to let her mom yeah. deal with this a little more. And she also she needs to talk to her dad about it, too. If it's, it's concerning her, talk to him. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. I mean, you know, if it's been 25 years, and he stopped on his own a long time ago, supposedly he's been sober all that time. Was there AA around 25 years ago? Mm -hmm. Pardon my ignorance. I guess so, mid-70s, so... <laughs> They yeah, just uh, take him, take his lampshade off, and sit down and talk to him yeah. about it. It's a little old booze uh, humor there for you. How you don't know because uh, you don't know, you don't know. For why do those lampshades but, always have to have little like tassels frilly around tassels the edge around? Yeah. The what is that? They're sort of like shrine. Because the rest lampshades. of them don't look yeah. good with your outfit. That's I, the truth. <laughs> if I've been on queer folk long enough to learn one thing, it's that yeah. Patrick. Yeah. You're 14. Yeah. You have gay friends. Yeah. You want to know what makes them gay? Yeah. Are you gay? No. How many gay friends do you have? Like two or three. Are they your age? Yeah, some of them. Are they, are they out? No, no, not really. Do they talk about the fact that they're gay? Yeah. He doesn't know what out means. Oh. Do, you, do you ever have any homosexual feelings yourself? No. All right. Are they out? Are they out with you but not with their parents? Yeah. Okay. All that right. is a difference. Right. Yeah, I can see that. All right, so what's your question? You want to know what makes them gay? Yeah. Uh, Genetics. Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've found a mixture on this show. Some people are just gay Born. right uh, as soon as they hit the uh, floor of the operating room. And uh, the other ones are mm, fiddled with by their uncles, and it kind of bends their antenna a little bit. Mm -hmm. But either way, they're gay. Or their aunts uh, or their moms. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. That's Adam's yeah. Try, I'm trying <laughs> favorite to th theory. I'm trying to think. Yeah. yeah. That, well, any, I, any, I don't mean any, sexually. I mean messed with emotionally. Therefore, they don't feel safe with a woman, so they right. You know, find okay, there's, there's okay. There's three. Else. There's three. Three. Three gay categories. Right. That one is I'm gay. Certain. I born six years old. You can look at him, tell almost by bone structure or something. You can yes. just go. This kid's gonna be gay when he grows up. That's well, pretty obvious. Well, I I do believe that a certain percentage of the animal kingdom and hmm. ourselves included mm -hmm. can aren't. aren't 
supposed to reproduce. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. That's and some, some are control. some people are born just sterile. Some people mm -hmm. uh, have the inability to reproduce, and a certain percentage will be gay and and not not it's have to worry to, yeah. about repopulating yeah. the uh, planet. Absolutely. So I think it's one of those sort of nature's uh, plans. So certain certain amount are gay. Right, right out of the shoot. The uh, second group was molested or sexually screwed with, and then the third group just had a uh, Jewish mom who <laughs> just never stopped pounding on him. And they got so tired of women, they never want to see another one again. <laughs> right. e either way, ashamed of yourself. <laughs> they're all just as gay. As a matter of fact, the guys who got right. turned gay sometimes are a little gayer because there's more energy involved with that than there is the, in the yeah. guys that are just sort of The other ones will fight it their whole lives and, and not even, that they'll way. be self-hating in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Right. Deal with it. You, you know, it doesn't quite matter, um, ultimately, the, the source of it. Um, it, it. Are you afraid it's contagious? Is that worrying you at all? No. Okay. Um, You're just curious. Yeah. Okay. You okay. can get it from tongue kissing them, though. I no, found you that. Can't. Oh, yes. That happened. Is that how you got it? <laughs> wasn't tongue kissing, oh, no. bung kissing, Drew. Oh, man. oh yes, oh yes. I didn't know. On that issue, I think I've been on the front line. Didn't know. So it doesn't happen didn't that way. No, you know you could get it that way. Didn't know you could get the gay that I thought way. You didn't know you were dumb bung kissing. I thought it was innocent heterosexual bung kissing. Is that a Santa Claus? <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, that uh, was years ago. What well, weeks ago? Go out camping. You got to earn your space in the tent right <laughs> that, there, right out of. That's <laughs> right. You're making some um, s'mores. All right, so Patrick. Yeah. We're going to take a commercial. Don't worry about it. Okay. They're fine. All right. All right? Okay. All right. It's not a sin. The devil isn't after you. Yeah. Good, good times. Yeah, well, you're not You're not gay. You're just uh, aiding and abetting the gays. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's a much lighter sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right there, buddy. Hal Sparks is our guest tonight from uh, Queer as Folk. Showtime, everybody. Sunday nights <laughs> and uh, then high def on Tuesday nights. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Love Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 Love Line on 94.7 NRK. We'll be right back in a minute. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Dr. Drew. Adam's looking for tires for me. Yeah. Huh. I'm Al Sparks. I'll be filling Al, in, making Al the uh, and unproductive, wise-ass comments. We'll be the new team here on Love Line. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Adam will guest occasionally. Yeah. We'll see what happens. What are you going to do? Well, yeah. that, that is, we have a cyber Adam who sits in once in yeah. a while. So uh, I think I've got the Adam thing down. You know, no, no. You, don't get pregnant. Yeah. Don't okay. get pregnant. And? What are you going to do? He's a big boy. Yeah. Big boy. <laughs> what else? That's why I make the big bucks. That's why I make the big bucks. Yeah, That's well. why you make the big bucks. A couple more. Good times. Oh, hey, it so takes all kinds. There you go. That's, Ad, a, that's Adam. Adam Headroom. Adam Headroom. There you go. This now is a Brandon who's 19. Hello. Hey, hey. Brandon. Um, yeah, I was wondering how you're supposed to know if a girl's really having an orgasm. I listen every every other night when I can, and mm. uh, it seems to come up quite often that you say uh, girls can't really, don't have orgasms when they're, when they're around like 18, 17, 18. I was wondering how you're supposed to know if that's true, if they're lying to you or not. Well, I, you know, I think Adam was saying it's a mathematical improbability that they have it during intercourse during that period. Yeah, it's not that that most, can't. but it's not that they can't, and it's certainly, right. you know, well, that's why I make the big buck. It, uh, it depends a lot on on the. Are you talking about somebody you're with? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've been in two serious relationships, and I've confronted them both. But what are you gonna do? They say what's true. They, they say that they, 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 they are orgasming. That's okay. Nice. That's why you got, got a Take it at face value. Here's the other thing. If she can't be honest, she doesn't deserve an orgasm. <laughs> no. Um, honestly, though. You can't tell, really. Uh, women have contractions of the vagina during orgasm. You might notice that, but then they mm -hmm. can fake that, too, even if mm -hmm. they're really clever. He's a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed the contractions and... Um, Sometimes they're a little bit more uh, lubricated than others. Good times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Then they're having orgasm during sex? Yeah. Two of them. Wow. See, hey, it takes all that's kinds. Good. It no, does indeed. No. It, 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 take, them, take them on face value. If for some reason, you know, you, you suspect that it's not true, you know, that's, that, that's more about trust in the relationship, too. If she thinks she has to lie to you to keep you happy, that's going to show up in other places. And by the way, just because we say most women don't have orgasm during intercourse, they're still... Tens of millions of women that do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're talking about a giant population. We're sort of dividing it into most and 
you know, versus all. And what are you going to do? Yeah, That's if they're yeah, right. And it's just that it in the 18 to 22 range is when they start to be able to have orgasm at all during sexual encounters and or where things like masturbation start to sort of make sense. And then it also goes that. away during a time, and then it'll come back when they're 30 to 33, where you can almost not stop them. Huh? <laughs> All right. Well, a little virtual Adam there. It was good. You were good. Yeah. I was. It was funny, you're, right? You're funny and useful, and uh, that's why you make the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> bah, 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 bah. <laughs> All right. I'm uh, going to move forward with a real Adam here, Danny. Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's up? Um, me and my girlfriend been doing it for like the past three months, and like we've done it like 30 times. Mm-hmm. And like I've only gotten off once. Like the very first time. Mm hmm. The and very first time and then 29 without. Yeah. Why? I don't know, dude. All right, dude. You get, you get aroused, you have sex for a long time, you yeah. don't ejaculate. Yeah. Okay, you're a non ejaculator. It's, it's panic. <laughs> how, long, how long do you have uh, sex for? For like 30, 45 minutes. Right. Do you wear a condom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you finish? Huh? How do you know you're done? Yeah, hey, how do you know you're done? She gets done. Yeah, she says no more. She gets yeah. done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Once she's done, it's over. After a vagina gets tuckered? Yeah. All right. Oh, boy. Uh, well, some women get this way. and uh, Some women? Some men. men. Some men. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. And some men, it's that way their whole life where it's a problem to have ejaculation. Some no. of those guys... What? Like, I've... Like, we... Like, I've had sex, like, a lot of times, like, but I've gotten off, but it's like... With her, it's different? Yeah. I don't hmm. know. And, like, okay, I think okay, I, I felt my nuts the other day. <laughs> and, uh -oh. like, there was a lump on it. And I don't know. It was like... You don't know? You know? Wait, how, was that immediately after? No. A long period? No. All right, so... Just, All right, no, just wait, wait, hold, on, hold on a second. Let me talk to Danny oh. for a second here. You've had sex with many other women? Well, like, actually, like, four people I've had... Because, like, this one chick, she used to live with me. And I did her like. Yeah, that was your sister, day. right? Huh? Your sister? No, dude. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Stepsister. Um, <laughs> Stepmom, possibly. So here's the thing you've had sex now 29 times without having an ejaculation. Yeah. I think there's a problem here. But yeah, he, like, just like, quiet and listen. He's to postulating us. that maybe it's not the girl, maybe something has changed in him. Yeah, because like. Would it, like, uh, if I had nut cancer, would it, like, stop me from getting no. off? Well, not necessarily. No. And what no. about, what about masturbation? I haven't done that in a while. You just hump for 45 minutes, don't have an orgasm, and go home and go to bed? Yeah. Is there much. an ice pack involved? Um, really? You're not, uh, you're not, you haven't masturbated in months? Really? Masturbate. Right, well, and that's a change for you, right? Yeah, kind of. Are you on a medication? Uh, no, I was on medication for, like, a year or two, but then... For what? Like, for, uh, depression and, mm -hmm. uh, bipolar. What medicine were you taking? Uh, I took Tegretol, um, Rimron, Depakote, Seroquel, and Jesus. some other thing. Are you smoking a lot of pot now? No, I haven't. Wait. You doing? Uh, wait. <laughs> wait. Let, let me check my mouth. Are you doing, wait a minute. They're smoking right, it. Wait. Right. <laughs> Are you doing any other drugs? Well, uh, that what's it called? Uh, Cocaine. Corsetin. Corsetin. Yeah, you know, corsetin, cold and cough. Yeah, the the robo tripping. Yeah, dude. I like the other yeah. day. I took thirty two. And are you doing that regularly? No, I did it. Well, I've done it like in the past. Two weeks, I've done it like five times. You, you said you took 32 the other day? Yeah. 32 ounces or? Yeah, tablets. Pills. Oh, yeah. oh, they're in a the pill form. Yeah, right? tablets, yeah. huh? Okay, well, see, Danny, a couple of things. First off, this is the least of your worries. I mean, you took, not, you, took 32, no. you took 32 of those pills. Yeah. You're 16 years old, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I knock mean, it off. And it's scrambling you. I mean, you're not tracking as clearly as we'd like you to track. The, 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 it could be your drug use that's screwing up your sex drive, too. However... Also, you got to be high not to beat off after having sex 29 times and yeah. not going home and smacking yourself around. <laughs> Are you exaggerating, too? Are we... Yeah. Has it been... Okay. 
Yeah, and the, the males in the room can't 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 process Comprehend this. Can't it's impossible. Can't, yeah. what, what, how could this Let, be? Let's focus on the drugs here. I think. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I, a, you need a medical evaluation because things like prolactin secreting tumors or the pituitary gland problems can definitely shut you down sexually. So that's one possibility. I don't see where the bipolar medicines would have left you this way. Certainly, you could have been this way while you're on the medicine, and now the the illicit drugs you're doing, the bromocryptine, you know, the, excuse me, the uh, corsetin and all the stuff, the robotrip. Thirty two pills. That, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a box, right? Is that a box? Yeah. They're... Yeah, they, they take a box of them. That's what they do. All right, Drew, uh, uh, you you may not think that sounds like yeah, much, but that sounds no, like a lot it's of pills. A, it's a tremendous, and it's potentially damaging, even to reasons of their spinal cord. And, and 16. Uh, yeah, and so that may be, if, if medically things are okay, it may really be the drug use that's damaging you. But I'm, I'm just saying all bets are off, Danny. And Danny, you sound scrambled. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you need... Hey, you, you're, you're not tracking normally. Like not knowing what scrambled means. <laughs> that you have to think about what drug we were asking you about when you knew full well what you were taking. That, yeah. You know, that you smoked pot recently, but you couldn't remember when. Do you do, do, you do PCP? Yeah. No, okay. All right, but Danny, you're 16. You need your brain for later. Yeah. I mean, even if you don't plan on being a, an eye surgeon, it doesn't matter. You're still going to want your brain for things I'm like conversation. I'm worried about all these people listening that think that they... And they, your mood and yeah. your all that bipolarity and stuff may be all the drug use. All right. Well, yeah. that's good times. Yeah, good times. We're yeah, going to take... It ta takes all the time. I'm really worried about the people who are listening or thinking that if they take a box of Robitussin and they can have sex 29 times for that. No, no, yeah. no. That, that's <laughs> not a reliable... I can go and go and go. No, it doesn't work that way, just for the record. No, I'm beaten off after a long uh, sexual... Okay. It's, it's, Hal, it's the dextromethorphan that causes these hallucinogenic experience, and it's bad news. Hal Sparks mm -hmm. is our guest tonight from uh, Queer's Folk. Showtime. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. I'll yell at uh, Drew about his car tires, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Call the Dateline. Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Call the Dateline. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. 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 On 94.7 NRK. Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Hal Sparks is our guest tonight. Queer Hello. Folk. Showtime, Sunday nights, and then uh, again on Tuesday in uh, High Definition. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Paul Tracy, the uh, race car driver, is going to be in here uh, tomorrow night. He's going to be uh, racing down at the uh, Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach uh, this weekend. And uh, we'll talk to him about that tomorrow night. All right. Let's uh, go back to the phone, speak to Jessica, who's 14. Jessica? Yes, um, I live in Orlando, and I was recently, I just moved here from Tampa, Florida, and I live upstairs from a 17-year-old, and I met her one day, and, like, we started hanging out and stuff, like, I started meeting, like, older friends, and, like, I hang out, we smoke pot and stuff, mm -hmm. she's bisexual, and, like, I don't know, like, I never, like, I thought of being with a girl or something until I met her, and, like, I don't know, I think I have, like, feelings or something, like, when I'm around her and stuff. Well, that's fine. But it sounds like overall you're kind of you're all over the place, Jessica. You're you sound out. hesitant too. You sound like your first reaction isn't a, you know a strong one in that direction, though. Yeah, my life's been kind of like weird. I don't yeah. Know. yeah, what happened? Um, I don't know. My dad went to prison when I was like seven. Why? From molesting um, her, Jessica? For possession of heroin and okay. I don't know. So you're dealing with heroin addicts around you yeah, grew up around. My Did mom any of their... recently been on crack. Um, I was living with her. Any of their weird friends mess with you or anything? Um, actually, no, I've never been sexually abused. So just the chaos of being around addiction. Chaos, yeah. And, right. and who are you living with now? My dad. How he is got he? out of prison last uh, April. Uh -huh. is, he, is he in recovery now? Um, he's doing great, actually. Um, he knows that I smoke pot, uh -oh. and, like, he, he accepts it because of what I've been through. And, mm -hmm. like, he's, like, he doesn't do it, and he's been going to his probation officer and stuff, and he's been doing pretty Good, actually. Yeah, it's kind of weird mm -hmm. that he knows you smoke pot and uh, is sort of okay with it. 
Well, sometimes recovering people just start to throw up their hands and go, "No, oh, I can't." You know, this kid went through a lot. It was well, my I, fault. I know there's I that. There's I can't that. Talk you out of it because where it. I came from, so. I can't pass judgment because you know where I've been. But right. I, I don't think that's being a parent. Mm-hmm. Well, he's new to that know. part. How long was he away? I don't accept him. And my mom is. Um, she just recently got out of jail from uh, mm-hmm. co- coke. She was messed up and stuff. All right. But Jessica, do you want to go down that path too? Huh? Do you want to go down that path too? No. Definitely no. Well, you're 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 heading down. Yeah, that's there. where you're going. You're, you're right moving. Now. You're, you know, and oftentimes, sex, sexual acting out of all types is really part of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And for women, usually a lot of this comes in through the path of love and intimacy. Mm-hmm. You know, you go with this girl and she you feel this feelings and this connection with her, and you, that that turns into a sexual feeling and an attraction. Mm-hmm. That that's compulsive. That's trying to escape other feelings. That's it's not, not a genuine it's sexual not a, impulse. It's not a real relationship. And, and she's and, in the same apartment complex as you are. Yeah. And you said you don't accept your dad. Well, one no, I don't accept my dad at all. Like I'm really mean to him. Like, I cuss him out and stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. We always get in arguments. He's probably dying to go back to prison. Yeah, mm-hmm. I told him. Like a fourteen-year-old pissed-off yeah. teenager smoking mm-hmm. pot. And, I, like yeah. he just gets on my nerves, like to the point, like I just wish he would die. Like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's wow. nice. But listen, Jessica, mm-hmm. y- your dad's been through a lot. He's mm-hmm. uh, allegedly served his debt to society. He's mm-hmm. out now. He's yeah. he's staying on the, keeping his nose clean, as we used to say back in the day. That's what my counselor's telling me. And he's trying, and I understand you're angry about the past, and you, you should be, but it's not going to help your situation at all to, to start getting in, up in his face and causing friction with him. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you think, I mean, not for him, he doesn't deserve it, but for you, do you think yeah. you could just uh, sort of yeah. make things nice at home and not get into it with him and not uh, chase the uh, lesbian yeah. uh, 17 year old who lives above you and smoke all the weed and do all that stuff? Yeah, and recently I did ecstasy. Like, oh, all right. Well, that's more like it. That's what I'm talking about. Like two weekends, like two weekends ago, and like, but recently my eyes, like every time, like I try to study something, like they go back and forth really fast. Okay. And it's really weird. Well, that's not good. What are you What are you studying? The Torah? Huh? No. I just what? had a feeling she was Jewish. I, I just it just sounded like and Drew. I know you're thinking the same thing. You, you need Typical to do. Jewish you family. need to do an about face. You need yeah. to stop staring at this life arrangement and thinking this is all there is in the world, and you need to take a big glance around at the rest of life around you and give that a shot because you're headed in the exact same direction your mom and your dad went in. You don't want to have a kid who hates you the way you're hating your dad, right? Yeah, definitely not. Okay, so you got to go the exact opposite direction. If you're leaning towards this way, just give your life a shot in the other way. Just, you know, try it on for six months, not smoking the pot, not getting involved with this girl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, since I've been doing drugs, like, there, I've been to school down here in 45 days, and I've missed 25 days. Yeah, see, that's saying, yes, you're, it's just, it's this habitual stuff. You're just, you you know, you think this is all there is. Mm -hmm. You think this is all there is in your life, right? You're just Mm -hmm. used to it. Mm-hmm. This is, you're making a lot of assumptions based on your past experience, and you just need to turn it around. You need to s- look at the rest of the world and go, you know what? The rest of the world isn't screwed up like this. Oh, you don't I- need this friend. You you don't need the drugs. You don't need any of that stuff. You need to just find out who you are and grow up. Yeah, how about finding Jesus Christ? That's hey, not, I'm not in, saying that at he's all. He's in Florida. <laughs> yeah, in prison, he's actually. in prison he's, and in right. Florida. Some no. advice we haven't given for in a while is to behave as if. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as if, as as if, if your saying. parents weren't junkies and if, as if you weren't living yeah. in a crappy apartment in Florida. Mm-hmm. And and just try to pull yourself up out of that mire. This isn't all there is. This girl isn't the only friend options you have around. You're focused on it because that's what you're used to. But I bet there's other people in your same apartment building that aren't like that? No. Let me make this point, actually. Because I've seen this with my friends. and uh, What? Well, here's what, here's what happens. Families break up. Yeah. People don't have money to uh, buy houses in the suburbs, and they end up moving into these apartments. And these apartments, well, not there's nothing intrinsically wrong with the apartment. The apartment is filled with a bunch of people like themselves, mm. the single parents with teenage kids mm. that had some difficulty. And now, you know, let's face it, anybody who's, you know, in their mid-40s who's living in a, you know, one-bedroom or two-bedroom apartment paying 650 bucks a month in Florida... Life hasn't exactly worked out the way they'd planned, and their kids probably have gone through a lot, seen a lot, just like Jessica here. 
Now they're in a complex with a bunch of people like themselves. Right. Same the, economic disadvantage, right. same problem. The parents in the same background. The parents get up and go to work in the morning. They're gone. And now you got nothing but the 17-year-old who lives defective. upstairs right. and a couple of the uh, screwed up uh, kids who live across the way. And everyone wants to hang out, smoke weed, and cut school. This becomes, and then everyone starts boning each other. God damn, I missed out on that. <laughs> Stupid dad. I'm going to kick him in the nuts for buying that house. Your dad wasn't screwed up enough. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. He was just screwed up enough to be screwed up. Like, he should have enough to screw not you enough up. enough to damage you so should that have actually been normal or, you or so effed up that I could have got laid in high school. There you go. All right, so this is going to be tough for Jessica. Yeah. And I don't really know what we can tell her. And now we're getting back to don't get pregnant. Yeah. Well, whatever. You just, it, you're 14, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do an about face. Just yeah, give it a what shot. Does that Don't mean. Well, I mean, I mean. It, uh, I know what it means, but what does it mean to Jessica? It means she she needs to. Don't hang out with this girl every day. Look, go someplace, go across town, hang out someplace else. You know, take a look at her city and her school. When she's at school, when she is at school, join a different activity. I, Meet I different think, friends. Yes, I think she Seriously. needs to find something. The world is way bigger. It's art or cheerleading or yeah. poetry or something that she gets involved with. Yeah, she'll find a support group there. Right. Like other All friends. Right. Yeah. Drew, let me just ask you this. I saw you look around. I had uh, papers... Uh, Oh, you yeah. know what I did? Mm -hmm. They're outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Just wanted to make sure where my uh, sheets were. <laughs> Kleptomaniacal tendencies coming back through. And, that was uh, that little test I had you fill out. Adam still hasn't done his. I was looking very for Very telling. It. Yeah. Elizabeth? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. What's um, up? Well, first of all, I want to say I love you guys. Love your show. Love um, you, baby doll. <laughs> um, but basically what the problem is, is like um, when I was 14, um, my mom, she went in the hospital because she's an alcoholic. And... Um, so I was staying with my best friend and his family, and while I was there, his dad um, sexually assaulted me. Your best friend's dad? Yeah. Who, who is a male? Correct, yeah. The, your best friend's a male? Right, yeah. Okay. And um, so he sexually assaulted me, and now, like, you know, and... I How many times? Well, it was just over a period of, like, three or four months. What did he, he had sex with you multiple times? Well, no, like it wasn't. It wasn't sexual. It was more of just like the touching, and more of a really psychological attachment kind of thing. No, tell us more. What what happened exactly? Okay. Um. Well, basically, like, um, you know, he would just like, I don't know. He would always put himself in a situation where he could like touch me or, um, you know, just be just be close to me or find any excuse for just you know holding my hand or caressing me or just you know just being like just overly friendly you know just really you know. all right well that, that may have creep, that may have creeped you out but that's not maybe that was maybe that was normal for that family that's how they made someone feel welcome and loved well I don't know it gave me like uh, well it got you know worse to the point where he did like you know touch me in places that were inappropriate you know well, like tell us what what happened well. Um, you know, like basically just, you know, fondling and stuff like that. Fondling you know, your, like, your, your breasts or? Yeah. And, uh, um, okay. you know, like he would come into my room and you know, I'd be asleep. He'd be like, oh, you know, time to wake up. And then, you know, just he would do that. And, uh, um, we, 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 grab, we, grab a boob when it was time to wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so now like I find it really difficult to have like a normal relationship. How long ago was this? It was three years ago. And why were you living with your friend? Because... Mom was an alcoholic and went into the hospital. And where was your dad? Well, he's in Wisconsin, and I've never really lived with him, and because, they, like, he had had an affair with my mom, and they had me, so he's never oh, okay. been around. He has his own family and stuff. So you never met him, really? Well, I've met him, and... Um, were there other guys around when you were growing up? No, not at all. It's my, my mom, me and my mom. So you never got molested before this guy? No. Never. Although this guy, although I don't necessarily like the cut of his jib, right. I don't know if I would technically call what he did to you sexual molestation. Right. But right now you're having trouble having relationships? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but it's not not because of that. It's not, not related to that. that. No, yeah. it's because your dad abandoned you and your mom is an alcoholic. That's yeah. why you have trouble having relationships. And it might even be the guys you're with. The people you choose. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is about... Uh, the human condition that has to sort of pick something that wasn't really the culprit and then focus yeah. on that, it's somehow easier that's, that's, than it is that's to That's because we're all kind of hit to psychology now, so we're all looking for what the root is a lot of times, too, you know? 
But I'm told there's got to be something. I just mean, I just mean, it's easy what the something is. You have an alcoholic mom who was such a severe alcoholic; mm-hmm. she had to be hospitalized. And you had a dad who you basically never met who right. abandoned you. This is why there's issues yeah. with your intimacy, not the uh, good Samaritan who uh, copped a feel yeah. three years ago. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, the, yeah. the the wiring in your brain is being set up long before all that. Although yeah. that can be traumatizing, the earlier profound traumas have a tremendous residual effect on your brain wiring. And if there's mm-hmm. someone who uh, needs to be blamed, uh, blame dear old dad. Oh, Ultimately, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you got to deal with that stuff, and maybe you should be going to Al-Anon. Well, I thought about that, but I'm not really, um, you know, into trying that. I mean, just because, I don't know. You'd, I just you'd rather focus on the guy who didn't do anything to you? Well... No, I just you know would rather move on. Yeah, I'm going to college in the fall, and I just- no, that's not that is that is the moving on is is the instinct, and that's the other thing humans do is just try to push things down and, and live. You know, they don't want to deal with the pain because they've bandaged it and compartmentalized it. But the fact is, big pieces of yourself get sacrificed to all those experiences, and that's not the wrong the right way to go ahead. Either get individual therapy or start going to Alateen and get a sponsor. Go to college and Alateen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and go to college, of course. But you can do both. Are you going away to school? No, oh, wait a second. Oh, Let me get away. Are you going away to school? Yeah. Okay, good. It sounds like you've done pretty good mm-hmm. considering where you're yeah. from. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, like I keep, you know, like I've never done any alcohol or drugs or had sex or anything. So, I mean, that's. Good. good. Yeah. I just want to, you know, just be able to go and meet a normal guy and not turn out well, like... you're 17. you got plenty of time. Just yeah. don't be in a hurry and, and do the Alateen <laughs> thing. Most 17-year-old guys, guys aren't normal, per se. You're, right and now, you're so. going to find nice guys yeah. boring, and you're going to be intrigued and attracted to guys that are unavailable and uh, dangerous. And that's the half the fun of college. But that's the problem. <laughs> that's what you're left with, and you're not going to be able to ha- even have a relationship with guys that are really available. Nicole? Yes. That's nice when you just sort of damn people. As well, unle- yeah. unless you really? do some work. That's your... right. Mm-hmm. Nicole? Yes? You're 23? Hello. Yes, I am. Would you like Drew to damn you at the top of the mm-hmm. call or wait till the end? <laughs> <laughs> You're mathematically screwed. Your chances of being... No, go ahead. It's time to start listening, God damn it! <laughs> where did that come from? I'll tell you where it came from. Cyber it came from your past. Ooh. It came from your parents. Really? Mm-hmm. There it was. Go ahead, Nicole. <laughs> Thought I dealt with that stuff. Hi. Well, oh, first no. of all, I wanted to say, Drew and Adam, love you guys. But Thank how you. my <laughs> mom and I, my moms and I, we used to watch Queer Folk religiously. It's great. Wow. Thanks. I don't know how I feel about that, but that you and your mom see my butt at the same time. That's kind of interesting in its own Well, they, they still watch it. I uh, don't have cable anymore. Oh, so. I understand. But slide. they love you. Thanks. So, Back um, to you. But I have a question about um, my husband, husband and I have a mutual friend. And as of recently, he has started hitting on me a lot, like blatant hitting on me. Mm-hmm. And we kind of want to, you know, broach the subject with him. But we don't want to push him away. Since Does your uh, your husband's aware of this? Yes. Does he do it in front of your husband? Um, he does it kind of around him, but not directly in front Is of him. Is he single? Um, actually, he's getting married in October, but the relationship isn't all that wonderful. A guy that's behaving like an asshole mm-hmm. and is disrespectful of you and your relationship and your marriage, why do you care if you push him away? Because he's been if, friends if, with your husband for a long time? Well, he's been a mutual friend. And yeah, but who's, who first, sir? Um, it would have been, well, we met him at the same time, actually. Okay. All right. Again, what's all you're risking is you're offending and or pushing away somebody who is being extremely inappropriate and, frankly, sort of... Uh, well, how, I mean, how hard is he hitting aggressive. on you? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not really bad. It's just we, we kind of feel it might be because of his relationship. Well, what is he doing? Well, it definitely pre- is. Precisely what's he doing? I mean, you know... Exactly what's he doing? Thing. He says things to me about, you know, how he wants me, you know, different things like that. Wants you what? Like, in a sexual way. All right. And, and yeah. And I mean, uh, do, you, do you guys all spend time together as couples? Um, we, we spend time with him, but his fiancé is, is really abusive and, and is, not a ni- is not a nice person. And so we try and tend to stay away from her. Yeah. And uh, is it, does this guy drink? Um, no, he doesn't drink at all. So he's doing all this sober. Right. And he, no he, he should be uh, fearful that uh, you're going to tell your husband. Now, did, did your husband find out because you told him? 
Yeah, I came out and told him. All right. Right and uh, may, may, maybe your husband needs to talk to him. But I agree with Drew. And, and yeah, what do you got to lose here? I mean, it's not like right. And and it's not a friend. Sounds like a jerk. He's not yeah. a friend. Yeah, get and, another friend. And listen, everybody. I know this sounds cruel, but especially when you're 23, there, there's all there's people we all knew at 23 we have not seen since. You right. know what I mean? And we're probably better off for it. Part of and, life is cutting your boats. You know, <laughs> like these people who have been dragging along with you for a time, they're not appropriate anymore. Yeah. You've outgrown them. They've they're stagnant. That's it all go. right, because it makes room for new people that have something to offer. Yeah. So, Nicole, maybe you guys ought to just do a little less socializing with the guy. Yeah. Give him the message. Yeah. We've, we've thought about I that. I mean, unless you want to dance. I mean, it's just been... You want to dance? No. It's you want to get into it? Be, no. It's you don't. Weird because his relationship is getting worse. Well, that's and his problem. He's, he's, go, he's going towards... It looks like going towards me. Yeah, but... How, but he's still getting married to her in August? Unfortunately. Well, how how often? Uh-huh. Here's here's the thing. Here, I hear this all the time. Okay. Everybody says they want to get themselves out of a situation, but yet, yet they magically don't. They always mm-hmm. want to yeah. dance. Yeah. The phone rings. They pick it up. The person yeah. wants to get together, and they get together. Yes. It's so easy to avoid people. Yep. It, you know, he calls, wants to know what's going on this weekend. You got something else to do? I, I agree. And Nicole, your role in this is a little suspect. Well, we've it, never we've never done anything by ourselves. Him. See what I'm getting, getting at here. Now it's always the three of us. I, I know, but Kevin first off, why are why are the three of? I understand he's a friend of yours, yeah. a friend of his, but you're married. Mm-hmm. He's got a relationship. Well, why spend so much time with the guy? Does your husband work with him? Yeah, we actually all work together. Oh well, that's something you could have brought up. Yeah. So you guys have to see each other at work every day. Pretty much. What kind of work? Um, we work on the phones at a mobile phone company. So uh, you're going to see him in there every day when you go to work? Yes. Okay. Well, now this it merits a conversation. Yeah, it changes things a little bit. I'm glad I asked, though. Yeah. Okay. So here's what needs to be done. Your, uh, your husband, because you try to go for the um, least uncomfortable, most tactful angle the first time. I think your husband needs to pull him aside and say, uh, you Watch know, your mouth. Nicole, Nicole's told me a couple couple of things and uh that, I'm, I'm sure i'm sure you're just screwing around yeah. i mean i'm sure you didn't mean anything by it but you know she was a little freaked out by it and she thought she's it was taking something. it she's taking it more than it's what getting you un- yeah. it's getting uncomfortable i appreciate it if you just tone no, that no down. no no see drew this the, don't have that conversation because people don't want to have that conversation they're not going to have it oh okay so which you one? play stupid uh, you say you know the old lady yeah. she's a little sensitive uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, in the head <laughs> you know but she it's did true. say something to me, and you know what? I don't need her busting my balls. So she don't want me to say if nothing. If I don't talk to you, she's going to... Yeah, gonna I'm going to say something. And so I know you're just screwing around. I know I know how guys are. You're just playing around, all that kind of stuff. But just keep it cool around her, because she's kind of sensitive. And then it's done. Now, if he does another thing after that, now you go in. Mm-hmm. Now now you never have to talk to him again. Mm. All right. Have your husband give him a little pull-aside uh, lunch break, all right? Okay. All right. All right. I'm, I'm saying you can have these conversations that aren't full frontal assaults. Right. I know Drew doesn't like it. But no, no, I do like it. In fact, I would, I, my, my instincts are to do that. The problem is that people that are really sort of sociopathic and do this kind of thing, and don't, that, that, they don't register. They also right. get talked into a corner where you, you come in w- wanting to have one conversation. You end up having the exact opposite. It's like you start thanking the person for calling you. You know, a yeah. lot of people do that, too. They get talked back into the same relationship. Let me talk to Drew for a second. House again, revealing something pretty it's very Oh, yes, yes. What, that I'm not stupid? Hold on, he's getting nervous. Okay, watch I think he can hear you. <laughs> no, I can't hear How you. How dare you? Quiet. Help. Who's he talking to? All right, let's go back. All right. but let's... Maybe my discomfort well, just well, comes from the fact that you're both nude. Play cool. I got it. Okay. <laughs> All right, anyway, we, uh, we got to go to break. Uh, we break this time every every night, don't we, Drew? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah. It's, yeah, it's, this is uh, nothing strange. Nothing for me to worry about. Eleven twenty-two. Nothing for me to get no, concerned. No, 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 no. We gotta pay the bill. This happens all the time. That's what we do. Okay. We break it's not about me. Time. All right, I'm not worried then. All right, uh, Drew, meet you in the bathroom. Okay, okay, I'm gonna cry in the corner. Love line back in a minute. Love line is brought to you by Trojan, America's number one condom, the most trusted for over eighty years. Hey, our 
everybody. Loveline of Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Hal Sparks is our guest tonight. That's true. Hal's from uh, Queer Spoke. It's true. It's true. That's where he's from. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, Sunday nights at uh, 10 10 o'clock on uh, Showtime and then uh, High Def on Tuesday nights. All right. Ready to rock here? Yeah, let's go. Save them kids. (laughs) Who are we going to speak to, uh, Marie? Mm Mm-hmm. All right, she's... Let's save some babies! She's 28. What's up? Marie? Marie? Oh, hi. Hi. Um, Okay, I have a question. I'm a divorcee, and I have a new boyfriend who's also a divorcee. And I think this is, for both of us, the first sexual relationship since our marriages. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, um, he seems to be shy even in the bedroom and I was wondering how I could get him to open up without looking slutty. Well, you want him to initiate sex or do you want him to sort of uh, expand his repertoire? The initiating's not a problem, but... You just want to move around a little bit. Make some noise? Uh, Yeah, a a little more variety. (laughs) I mean, I don't think... Guys consider looking slutty is sort of a public display for yeah. a guy. Yeah. In the bedroom, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to a guy. A guy's yeah. not going to think anything except uh, thank you. No, I mean, if you get out the uh, double-ended dong or something, uh, he, <laughs> You're might, like, it's... he might say something. Yeah. But, I mean... No, this is going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to hurt me. <laughs> he probably what he he probably was married to a woman who liked it this certain way. Uh-huh. He probably doesn't have a whole lot of experience. He's probably met her young, married early, and stayed with her for him? a while. Huh? Do you love him? Oh. Or are you guys there yet? We're not there yet. <laughs> okay. How long have you been going out? Uh, about three months. Three months, and you're already trying to kick him, you know, into high gear. <laughs> yeah. He should have. He should have uh, been pent off, like pent up. You know what I mean? I mean, he should have pent off. He should have been penting off. Uh, right. The whole time. Might have well, felt, okay. Uh, so, b- back to my uh, mm-hmm. idea. So he got married young, right? Uh-huh. Stuck with the same woman for a long time, and she was boring. So he mm-hmm. did what she wanted, and he didn't get a chance to uh, cut his uh, teeth. Okay. Isn't that, he hasn't been with many women. Uh-huh. You got to break him in a little bit. Okay. It's his coming out party or his coming on you party. But I'm, I mean, because yeah. we're both, I mean, okay, outside the bedroom, we, we're both rather Gregarious. shy people. Rather what? We're both rather shy people. Yeah, it, and I'm it, afraid that, you know, if I... No, I, listen. I, Marie, I, that's not, it will, I, that will not happen. All you gotta do is like, watch, I'll pretend to hump you over the phone, <laughs> all right? Okay, baby, I'm gonna give it to you in the missionary style, just the way we both agreed upon. <laughs> One, two, three. The sexual contract is being fulfilled. Yeah. Huh? yeah. How are you liking it? Let me know when it's over. You liking it? Well. <laughs> well. Wait, you want, you want something? You want me to move a little slower? Hmm? Slap his ass once and see what his reaction is. Hey, and got- then if he, if he doesn't instantly object, do it again. And... Be a little more aggressive with him. He'll feel like it's okay. Because most guys just don't feel like it's okay, you know? No, you can just shift around, shift, well, most guys do feel like it's okay. Well, you know what I mean. It's like if if he's been in a... The guy's had a limited experience. Yeah. Here's here's what you got to do. You do the missionary for a while and you go, hey, let's try a new position. And you just move into that new position. Uh Uh-huh. That's That's all. That's it, period. Make it seem like you just came up with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right? Okay. Uh, the other thing, it's been three months. Let him wait in a little bit, you know. Don't unveil it all at once. And just, you know. Does he give you oral sex? Mm, not yet. Oh. Is, that, is that the big problem? <laughs> no, no, not not really. Just. Right. Do you um, give him I mean, oral sex? We're taking it very slow. And well, he's humping you. Yeah. How slow are you going? Well, maybe he's I'm just jumping again. Yeah. It's only been twice, but it was the oh, okay. a perfect first time. Okay. But the second time was the exact same thing. Oh. Yeah, that's all right. Well, he was nervous. Well, it worked. He was trying to recreate. It worked. Yeah. yeah. He liked the you first came, time, too. He was like, oh, man, I guess she's got it. Because his wife had a system, too. Hey, guys. She only came with, like, you push button A, pull lever C, and right. if you do it in that order, she'll come. But if she if you change it at all, she won't. Guys are funny that way. They have, they have like, a, per, a, a sort of an optimal experience, an optimal mode. And you try to woman. recreate it. And that's it. That's it. That's it. It's not about varying. It's like, we, hey, got it. Let's go. That's right. it. All What's right. Just the shy thing. I mean, because like I said, outside the bed. Oh, who cares? Just tell him to start slapping your ass and humping your doggy. <laughs> I don't want to talk about. Uh, I'm going to go around the third lap yeah. here. You're 28. Let's go now. All right. Let's uh, take a question for Hal. Eric. 
Hey, kids. How you doing? What's going on? Wow. Hey. Great, Eric. Hey, Adam. Kids. Can you pretend like you're humping me over the phone? Yes. Oh, excellent. And uh, now, now, we, I'm going to give... We, yeah. We can do that after the show. I'm going to do but, it through a glory hole, though. <laughs> okay. But that's all right. Um, actually, I have a question for Hal. Howdy. Hey, Hal. How you doing? I'm good. You were the king of the bubble wrap and dude where's my car. It's right? true. Well, you know, I was I was a democratically elected leader, for the record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm wondering, since it kind of had a, a marijuana-based theme... Right. And there are a couple of scenes, you know, you weren't in them, but right. would you, do you, do you know if uh, any of the cast or crew members got high during the filming? During the filming? Yeah. Uh, no. Um, you don't know? It, it, no, I, I'm pretty sure not. Uh, That's really a shame. Uh, yeah, well, I know. I don't want to bum you out. It's really about audience experience anyways, you know, like, nobody gets really punched in the face during a fight scene that Jet Li does, but it's still great to look at. Did he say cast or crew? Yeah. Any I did book. Say well, that I can't speak well, the for. The, the gaffers are definitely yeah. uh, all right, well, burning. Yeah. I have, uh, yeah, all the teamsters are drunk or loaded. Yeah. You know, they're, they're high on something. And, you know, I just wanted to let you know you are part of the best absurd comedy that I've ever seen. Oh, no, you're not kind of chopper chicks, are you? No, no, I'm talking about okay. Dude Where's My Car. It was, oh, yeah. Okay, good. It was the strangest laughs I've ever had in a movie theater. <laughs> all right, Eric, uh, do you get yeah. stoned a lot? No, 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 I get drunk a lot. Okay. Uh, that's why his voice is like that. Good no, my, yeah. Have you been I, screaming, like, for the last 15 hours straight? No, I have SARS. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. But I'll get over it, though. <laughs> All right. Good. I know you will. I hope he doesn't. Thanks for calling. It's weird the way he phrased that uh, you were part of, like, he was going to mention another movie. Mm -hmm. And they went back to the first movie. Yeah, I did the strange cadence almost every sentence. The mm -hmm. only thing worse than a guy with a uh, no sense of humor is a guy who thinks he has a sense of humor. Who thinks he's smart. Okay. Oh, Drew. No, but it was, he had both. He thinks, yeah. Thinks was, Drew's a little claws came out at there. Adam, when you say that, Drew. What's How up? dare you, Danielle? <laughs> Hi. You're 23. Yeah. What's up? Um, I started having sex when I was 17. Didn't have my first orgasm until about a year later. Um, after that, had absolutely no problems. Usually, orgasm during sex. It was very rare when I didn't. Um, turned 22. Um, was abstinent for about a year, um, started having sex again, and I'm having a really big time, a really hard time orgasming now. Hmm. Who, what, what about the new guy? Um, he doesn't have a problem. Well, we know he doesn't have a problem. What I mean is, uh, how are you guys doing? How long were you together, you know, before you started having sex? I mean, how do you feel about him? We've been months. we've been together for about a year now. Uh, it's about six months before we actually started having sex. Um, I love him. He loves me. We're are you on, are you on medication? Um, not anything that, is according to the medication, should affect. Well, tell me what that something is. Um, I'm on stuff for my stomach. What? And, uh, Zantac, and I've also been on. I don't remember what the other one is, but I quit it before I started having sex again. What, what was it for? Um, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Are you on Reglan? Huh? Reglan? A what? Reglan. All right, listen, no. Drew. He, she, she would Actually, recognize I'd it the first time. I'd rather Drew than Adam. Shut mm -hmm. up. <laughs> All right. Now, where's my finger, Drew? It's poised. All right. Oh, there it goes. Listen, Drew asked you a question three times. You didn't have the answer. I yelled at Drew because that wasn't the drug you were doing. And then you start busting my balls. Just rot in purgatory for about another 20 minutes, and if I'm in a good mood, I'll talk to you. Bitch! Michelle? Yes. Jesus Hello. Christ. Hello, don't talk to me. six. What's Watch up? Watch where you're driving. How'd uh, you know? <laughs> What's up? Okay, um, I've been sexually screwed up for a while now, and, I mean, there's, there's quite a few things I could talk about, but the weirdest thing lately was I was getting whacked, you know, bikini whacked. Right. And um, it's just. You had an orgasm I, while you're getting a bikini wax? No. Okay. <laughs> no, and I've done it a few times, and it's been it's been fine. I've been comfortable, but this time around, I just it brought back sort of like a flashback. Of what? Of just it just didn't feel right. I felt really uncomfortable, and I just. Yeah, well, but I, I don't remember anything like that happening. Sort of like, like Sylvester Stallone in First Blood. I mean, they, like, they come and Michelle, shave you oh. and you freak out and kick everybody <laughs> and run out of the place. And Was it like that? Would a small town sheriff try to hold <laughs> you down with his billy club? Sure. All right. So, look, let me, let me ask this. You're never molested. You're never...
fiddled with? I don't know. Well, it's not it's not a conscious memory. Do you think it's possible to really not remember that? To just Commonly. Really- sure. Are there all kinds of implicit memories that do not have to be explicit, a visual memory or, or a sensical memory? Um, however, you say flashback. You didn't have a visual experience. Not a visual. It was just a feeling that overcame me and just... A familiar feeling where it just didn't feel right. How did the wax thing go? You wear a bikini bottom and pull it up, and uh, you have no, some. No, no, it's completely nude. Nude. Completely yeah. nude, and a little Asian woman does the probing down there. A little a big Persian woman. Oh, really? That might have yeah. been the thing. <laughs> Seen the crying game? Did it make you nervous? No. So, so you you're completely bottomless, right? Yes, and you're lifting your legs and you're throwing it back and just yeah. And uh, there's no, uh, they don't let you sport even some like uh, thong back, no. you know? No, because they have Listen, to smear it on over here. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I may have to speak. <laughs> I'm to you the king thing. of depilatory in this room. Let Hold me, on, let me. Uh, let oh, me. that's right. You have to. Do you have to do that for the show? You show. No, some, no, no, you no, sh- no. I just. You just do it as a No, 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 I don't or? do it as a... I mean, I've just had girlfriends who've done it, so I know, you know, like I've you know, like had the Playboy wax. And is it the full thing? It's the full the thing. The Playboy wax? Mm-hmm. Which is what wow, that that's, does that mean? That's top to bottom, baby. They're, they're yeah. going... They're going... All the way That's why your legs have to it's be the, up. It's around the Yeah, line. it's around every... <laughs> you're covering both entries. All right. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. You end up with uh, basically... Okay, that's like uncomfortable a, yeah. anyways. Well, so... Uh, that's going to feel weird regardless. And now, why do you say... The first thing you said, though, is I've been sexually screwed up for a while now. No, well, it's... Yeah, it's been ongoing. There's been... There's a lot of things. Like, just, all right. Oh, God, uh, yeah. All right, Mom. We can't get to it all right now. Well, no. will give us a, a, a taste? Well, yeah. she's not telling us anything. Um. Okay, well, I'll start with... I was very promiscuous before, and now I'm... Kind of, I've gone, I've gone the other way. Where right. I'm, all right, well, that and that kind of that doesn't that, mean anything. No, it does. It, in fact, most sexual compulsive go through periods of extreme abstinence and right. and, and what's the word deprivation. And the dep- this is a, she's an addict. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, and this I guarantee you. I, you well, mean she's an addict. Sexual she's, addict. She's an addict of all. Michelle, you you have a family history of addiction. I'm sorry. You have a family history of addiction. I don't know. You don't know. Uh, well. All right. Uh, that's it. She doesn't know. No, she didn't. She didn't say that. I thought yeah. she said that. She said she didn't know. No, she said she was about to answer. Yeah, it. she was thinking. Uh, like, yeah, Michelle. Yeah. Did you say you didn't know? I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? Do you have a family history of addiction? Family history or alcoholism? No. Parents? No, but I, you know, I've done my share of drugs and. But yeah. Corrected that myself. And no, this is not. You've not corrected anything. The fact is, it's, it's oh, just being why? expressed sexually now. She has no family history of drugs. But she's uh, she's an addict. I just I'm just telling you that's what this is. Mm. I, it's like I know it when uh-huh. I say. It. What, what, well, why are you asking what, questions? What's your then? ethnicity? I am Japanese. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. And then maybe it's a cultural thing going yep. on. Yeah. Well, the Japanese have a protecting gene against the. They, they can have alcoholism, but can't drink because of the flush and the vomiting and all that stuff. Uh, well, this okay. is yeah. This well, listen. Is, may, is maybe it's a cultural thing. Did you have your vagina bound when you were younger? No, she. <laughs> no. She went through this phase where you know everybody wanted to sleep with her because she's pretty in Japanese, and then it, she felt guilty about it, and so she stopped now for a time. No, 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 guys. That's uh, not listen, what that is. I don't care. I'm done. I, right. She said she got naked. She spread her legs. She had the uh, big uh, woman with one eyebrow dump a lot of wax up her ass, and uh, <laughs> she didn't like it. She can't think anything. There's no addiction. All she right. was sexually compulsive. All Drew right, smells it. Fine. All right. All right. We'll be back. Loveline <laughs> on 94.7 NRK. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. It's Dr. Drew. Hal Sparks is our guest tonight from Queers Folk. Showtime, 10 o'clock Sunday nights, and then uh, repeating throughout the week, as uh, most good cable shows uh, do. Many, many times. Many, many times, yes. I just, uh, <laughs> Tuesday high definition. Yes. I, tonight. A- the HD on, on Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. nights. Yeah. All right, let's... Uh, all right, I'm going to take uh, Danielle off uh, probation. Danielle? Yeah? You're 23? Mm-hmm. You've adjusted your attitude. Uh, what? Mm-hmm. You heard me. <laughs> you bitch! 
I forget what we got mad at her about. She needed to talk to you. Oh, that's right. So, I was yelling at Drew because he'd asked you the same question three times in a row. So I asked, was... I couldn't tell that you were yelling at him. I thought you were yelling at me. Was the gastroesophageal reflux medication Reglan? I don't believe so. Okay. Was it Prilosec or something like that? Um, I have been on Prilosec before. Okay. I don't think that was... Not- some of these, some, I mean... For because gastroesophageal reflux substantially increases your risk of esophageal cancer, it is important that this be treated mm-hmm. throughout your life. Mm-hmm. The problem is we have very good medicines that are harmless now, like the proton pump inhibitors or the Zantac. That you I want. was on a proton pump inhibitor. I understand, I of course, and they, but, but there are other called. medicines that they used to use, like Reglan and things like that, that do have neurologic effects. And that's why oh, I was great. exploring that. Please tell me, Prilosec isn't one of those. No, 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 no. Okay, those are, those are okay so she but was, that will uh, decrease your risk of cancer. Rather substantially to have okay. that, tr- that treated chronically. She was uh, horny before and now uh, she's not, or she's lost her ability to orgasm. Right. now You're fat. Drew, please. And with now, the same guy, with, in a relationship. Mm-hmm. No, with a new guy this but, time. But this relationship the whole time. No, not this relationship the whole time. This relationship's only been here for about a year. Okay. But the whole time you've been in this relationship, you've been having a problem. Right. right. Okay. How about oral sex? Um, oral is great. But no orgasm. Actually, yeah. Um, you do? Yeah, it's just a question of timing. Okay, so right. you're having orgasms, just not through intercourse anymore. Right. What do you mean timing? Is he not having sex long enough for having intercourse? Uh, no, actually, um, it gets to a point sometimes with intercourse where it gets painful. and it, it, There's like a burning sensation. Are you on a birth control pill? Yes, I am. Which one? Um, I'm on Nordet. All right, hmm. that that may be your problem. Really? Yeah, some women from the progestational agent and the birth control pill can get dry, and can get depressed, and can have their their libido knocked down a, a mm-hmm. notch. Okay, so see about getting so, that adjusted. Yeah, changing pills. All right, yeah. and uh, you're having the orgasm through oral sex. You're you know you're a little ahead of the game. You're doing fine. <laughs> I don't know why you changed, and I guess that's her question. And it but, bothers her. Yeah, she, but she's on a bunch of different medications, yeah. and, you know, women, they keep changing. Guys, we just get worse. <laughs> they have a slow decline, a slow slide. Yeah, from about the 10th grade on, we just all have a very, very slow slide. At first, it's, it's gradual, and then we hit the uh, free fall somewhere in our later 30s. But women seem to sort of peak and valley, mm-hmm. you know, like the stock market. Well, They're part of it, too, is places. like, you know... A woman's sexual reflex is much more akin to, like more attached to her psychological Absolutely. situation. She, if she Absolutely. trusts you, if she trusts the idea of having a child with you, she'll be more apt to have a, an orgasm during intercourse. If she doesn't, she how can, sexist? How dare you? How dare you say it's, it's true? It's absolutely true. And, it's but true. people attack that that point of view. But yeah, it's her, absolutely true. It's it's because, in a positive sense, just on a on a gen, like evolutionary, yeah, evolutionary yeah. thing. You you want to have an orgasm because the cervix dips down into it and pulls. You know, well, that's they, an old theory, but yeah, but the, you know what I mean. Yeah, it it, it they, allows for because, pregnancy because yeah. you want to have it again. Yeah. <laughs> Well, who knew the guy from Queer's Folk is a gynecologist as <laughs> well? I've had a lot of... Never mind. No, no, you got to compensate. I'm with you, buddy. Uh, oh, is that what I was going to say? Thank you for <laughs> telling me. Who knows what goes on in the old <laughs> vagina, the old <laughs> vagina, the old <laughs> vagina. How the record, I have my hand up. The old vagina. Kelly? Yes. You're 26? Uh-huh. What's up? Well... I have had this problem now with my boyfriend. Actually, it's not with my boyfriend. It's my problem. But I, every time we've been together sexually, I get a vaginal infection, like the real stinky fish kind. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to ask Dr. Drew what they keep putting me on this on Metro Gel. Cream, yeah. I was just wondering if it's something that's ever going to go away. With well, aren't isn't is he been treated? Yeah, we've both. Been, well, he hasn't been treated with any anything oral we've both had all the testing for chlamydia gonorrhea and everything te- the AIDS testing and everything well, 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 Bob wait a minute though. Blah, did, they, blah, blah, blah. did they do a urethral swab on him did yes. they, they stuck a thing in there and swabbed him yes they did I heard it from the other well family. this, oh, this is usually trichomonas what you've got and he needs to be treated with oral antibiotics or he's going to keep giving it back to you okay that's and, so it's it's simple for you. Mm-hmm. You take the cream and that makes it go away. But for him, he's got to take some oral antibiotics. Yeah, because every time I take it, I get either... I, I take it and then I'm okay for about a month and then and I get a, you, now I have a UTI well, and vaginitis at the same time. It's real fun going yeah, on down there. Yeah, he's reinfecting it. Okay, so right. he needs to take something too? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, good times though. Good times. Tell him to drink more water too. 
All right, that was He's easy. a big boy. Renee? Hi. You're 19? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, first of all, i got to say, how I've thoroughly enjoyed your co-hosting night. You've been very informative. Wow, well, all right, see? Hal's <laughs> a very lucid guy, from, uh, and he's knowledgeable. He is. I mean, he's so, awesome. See what yeah, what happens? can I help you with? You, know, <laughs> you don't <laughs> smoke pot, you don't drink. Yeah, That's right. This is, I'm the one white rat in the experiment that America is conducting <laughs> on itself. It's, yeah, I'm in the placebo group, <laughs> so I can actually function. Wow, good job. Yeah, yeah. So what's up there, baby doll? Um, I was wondering um, if I've done pot um, in the past. Could I still donate my eggs for, like, you know, the endometriosis clinics? Um, like, they have women that donate their eggs for up to like. Twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars. You do it for the money. Yeah. yeah. If you ever smoked pot. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that would exclude you now. Okay. And, do you know like? I know it's part of my personal crusade, but let's call it selling your eggs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Selling. True. Yeah. yeah. And you know, but, um, and by what? smoking pot in the past, do we mean a a week ago? A, yeah, and a huge amount. Are we talking trips to Amsterdam? Or are we? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. God no. Just recreational <laughs> high school use. Yeah, frequent high school use a couple years ago, and then um, probably like a couple months ago. And how much you get an egg? Um, well, from what I've heard, like I've checked into several different clinics, mm -hmm. and one of them I know was like anywhere from twenty five hundred to forty five hundred, mm -hmm. and then there's another one like in Reno, which was um, five thousand. And it is that, but that's you have to pull a lever, don't you? And the, whatever number comes up, that's what you get. And <laughs> like in a, it's on a slot three machine, eggs. Like <laughs> three eggs, and you get forty five hundred <laughs> ring and a viper. <laughs> and 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 is that uh, is that based? Is that scale sort of based on your qualifications, like your height or your education and that kind of stuff? And the rarity of some Actually, factors. I think it's based on the diameter of the egg. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> um, but um, it's on your on on your SAT scores, in, yeah. you know, and the coefficient of uh, whether you have blonde hair or not. No, I think it's just based on the different clinics, like right. the Market, areas that need more money. Market forces. You know. Yeah, but well, certain, some clinics can vary you, as much as two thousand dollars. Why are you? It's uh, the point is that. Five thousand, two thousand dollars may not be worth two thousand dollars in Los Angeles. You know what no, I mean? no, but yeah. within the same clinic, I think they vary. Really? And you, you start yeah. off by saying some were twenty-five, and the same one would go up as forty-five, as high as forty-five, didn't you? Well, how big is your student loan that you want to sell your eggs? <laughs> um, it's about five thousand dollars. Oh, I see. Yeah. And rather than pay it off over the course of eight years, you just have somebody stick a tube up in you. Suck one of you know, hey, Renee, a piece of your body out. And, Renee, does it vary yeah. within the same clinics? Um, no, I'm not sure. Well, like, there's two different ones that I've checked out in one of the same towns, and they one was 2,500 and the other was 4,500. They no, said, well, two different you know, clinics. Go to the one with 4,500 yeah. and you know, sell one egg, and then pay the go to work at McDonald's for a week and yeah. make 500 bucks. And exactly. <laughs> all right, donate that egg, and uh, then take all the money you got from donating it and all get right, yourself well. a nice Miata. <laughs> all right, good times. Uh, let's just have someone uh, tell how uh, they love them real quick. Lindsay. Yes. You big uh, queer folk fan. Hi, Lindsay. Yeah. Hi, Al. Hi, how are you? I love the show. All right, good. I can't believe I got through. I've been trying for like an hour. Tell um, me you love him in uh, 10 seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks you're kidding. I just wanted to call and tell you how much I love the show, and I just wanted to ask you what it, you know, what it's like, and if you guys are all close, and... Yeah, we're, you know, we're a pretty close-knit group of actors, considering. Um, I think it's because we've all kind of taken on not just a TV show, but, like, they, there's so they, much railing against us. They've also taken on the character roles. The, the man. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, all right, we got to take ourselves a uh, quick break. That's uh, Hal Sparks. Hi. We'll be right we'll back. We'll be right back. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these Datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the Dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the Dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. <laughs> 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Line on 94.7 NRK is brought to you by Car Toys. Love Line NRK.
thank uh, Hal Sparks for coming in here tonight. Good well, to see you again after uh, quite a few uh, months years. or years. Yeah. yeah. So it was, uh, thanks for coming in. We do yeah. appreciate it. Queers folk, everybody. Showtime. Sunday nights and uh, then repeat it all uh, throughout the week. Hal, uh, best of luck to you. Well, I'll take that as you know, and, positive. And <laughs> come back and uh, see us anytime you like. I will. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. She would Actually, recognize I'd it the first time. I'd rather talk to Drew than Adam. Shut mm-hmm. up. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.